And we'll begin with Barbara and her prelude. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. Amen. 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 Amazing grace. Amen. Amen. Well, let us continue in our, with our call to worship. God brought his people out of Egypt with joy. God chose the chosen ones with singing. God gave them the lands of the nations. And, and they, they took, took possession, possession of the wealth of the, wealth of the, peoples, of the people. people. That God's people would have a place to follow God and keep God's laws. A place, a place where, where they, they could worship, worship the Lord, Lord their God. God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Let us join in our congregational prayer. <laughs> O God, oh God, who provided your people with food in the morning, the manna of your provision, and quail in the evening for me to eat, we praise you. You directed them to collect only enough manna for their own household for each day they came. You taught you them, taught them to, to gather, gather what you gave each day, day and, the and the food kept, kept coming day, day after day. After day. O oh Lord, 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 teach us, us to gather, to gather what, we what we need only for, for the day, day and rely, and rely on, on you on for tomorrow's tomorrow. food. Help us to thankfully receive what you, what you offer, offer to us. To us. To, to know, know in our hearts, hearts that, that you will, will be there, there in your love for us tomorrow. We, we praise you, Lord, 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 for we know we that you love us beyond measure. So, so keep us always, always mindful of that love, love, love and, love and provision in our lives. Life. Help us to strengthen our faith and the Holy Spirit in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as we continue in prayer, I will ask if there are those that uh, we need to lift up that are not on our list. Okay, all right. Okay, so David's wife, David Probert's wife, is going in for some testing Monday uh, with a pulmonologist. Um, since her bout with COVID, uh, her lungs have not responded 
back to normal yet, so they're going to test. Add on to, he's still continuing to have some issues with his neck and uh, back and forth with the doctors. Bradley? Yeah. I just got a report from my uh, sister-in-law that my niece has been rushed to Fort Wayne with kidney failure. With kidney problems? Yes, my niece. Your niece. <clears throat> Bill's niece. Any others? <clears throat> All right, then let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you that uh, you are knowledgeable about all that's going on in our lives. You know everything that's going on in each of our bodies and each of our minds. And you are working all of that to your glory. We thank you for your healing power. And we thank you that, um, that there are specialists to assist in our body's healing, especially to assist uh, Jean, is it? Jean. And um, also Bill's niece. And we thank you that uh, you can be there for each one of us as the need arises. Lord, we do ask and we do praise for all of the ways that you interfere in our lives, to interfere for the better, that is, with Bradley as well, and his neck, and all of those others that are on our prayer list, we ask for your presence, for your healing, for your comfort, for your grace. And all of these we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, 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 give us yes, yes, thy, name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this, this day our daily, daily bread, 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 and forgive us our trespasses, as we as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. Lead us oh, not into temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 And now let us continue with our hymn, Jesus, the very thought of thee. Jesus, the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills the air, but sweeter Thank you, Joe. And as we continue on in our worship today, we're going to change from the book of Romans, which we've been studying for quite a few weeks now, moving into the book of Philippians. 
Now, Philippi was the first church established by Paul on European soil. And it stood in Macedonia on one of the main roads between the east and the west in the Roman Empire. And Paul had a close relationship to the Philippian church and could possibly relate to the opposition that they faced in their ministry to the people of Philippi because Paul faced much opposition in his own ministry around the empire. He wrote this letter to them during one of his imprisonments. He tells them that they can experience joy in the midst of all that suffering because the task of teaching the gospel with the mind of Christ. It is the good news the world does not want to hear and will oppose when it comes. So Paul encourages the people of Philippi to continue in the task in the face of that criticism for the sake of Christ. And he tells them and encourages them in this way from the book of Philippians, the first chapter, verses 21 through 30. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. For I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come again to you. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the truth of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering with him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw that I had, and now hear that I still have. And the sermon today is called Standing Firm in One Spirit. But Paul had confidence in the people of Philippi. Confidence that they would stand together in the Spirit of God to build one another up and to proclaim the gospel to the world as one body. Paul was convinced of their boldness in that proclamation, despite the opposition of those hearing it. God was their strength. God was their peace. God was their focus. And God's voice was their voice. Now, Paul himself had some powerful experiences with Christ, on the road to Damascus, he was blinded by the light of Christ as he was confronted by the Lord himself about his persecution of God's people who followed Christ. Paul had been a powerful enemy of Christ, jailing and even killing those who chose to follow that path in life. But the Lord knew the orneriness of Paul was from a heart that loved God and sought to defend God from those he saw as demeaning God in the faith. 
Paul's targets were primarily Jews who had seen Jesus as the prophesied Messiah from the scriptures of the Old Testament as we know it today. The scholarly Paul saw it a different way, unable to see at that time that the scripture had been fulfilled in Jesus and could be fulfilled in no other. Paul was a zealot, crying out against those he saw as having a wrong interpretation of the word of God. Until that day on the road, when he had a personal encounter with that Jesus, one that stopped the whole party of people Paul was traveling with and who also heard the voice of chastisement. And then there is the time that he was taken up to the third heaven. He tells the church in Corinth, it is necessary to boast. Nothing is to be gained by it, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth but I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me and heard in me. Now Paul speaks of himself here in the third person to the Corinthian church, a hardly disguised reference. Yet it seems to be as vivid after 14 years as it was the day he experienced it. A powerful sense of Christ in all that continued to draw him heavenward. He knew the value of being in Christ. He knew the joy of being in Christ. And his desire to know Christ in every way was the driving force in his life. Paul's ultimate desire was to experience Christ in all the fullness of heaven in heaven, but he also had a great sense that the people to whom he was ministering had a need to experience Christ as he did. For he said to the Philippians, for me, living is Christ and dying is gain. There is more to be had for Paul in death than in life, but life was more beneficial to the people who were granted to him by God to teach. If I am to live in the flesh, says Paul, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Have you ever experienced such conflicting desires? Are you ever torn between heaven and earth? I sense that in the middle of trouble or pain or disease, there is a temptation to express the desire to know the freedom of heaven and be released from the bonds of this earth. And as much as Paul desired to leave the earth, he embraced his ministry here as more important at that time than his personal release. It was this sense of helping others that made his choice to work in this world more palatable to him. It also made his identity with those in Philippi of greater importance 
than his personal destiny. For they were conflicted as he was. Their ministry to the unbelievers in their midst was a difficult path to take, full of potholes and bruising rejection. And Paul had some advice from prison. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, he says, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. For Paul, the most important thing for the Philippians was unity. If they allowed their opponents to intimidate them into factions and dilute their message of peace and grace, their ministry to the community would be crushed. The hope they experienced in their own community of believers would be lost in the anarchy of separation they needed to fight the temptation to scatter under the pressure of the community outside their walls. They had known the peace of Christ, and they needed to make it known among their friends, and yes, even their enemies in the city. They needed to live a life worthy of the gospel of Christ, in Paul's words, and that worthiness did not derived from individual expressions of life in Christ, but from a unified front in the face of opposition they encountered. Of course, their individual experience of that gospel is the common ground that held them together. It is the individual experience of the Spirit of God that unifies them as one body having something in common. And it is that unity that witnesses to their community, the superior presence of Christ that invites the community in. It is that one spirit, that Holy Spirit of God that binds them together in the face of the forces gathered to part them it is a lesson that we could learn in our own time, for unity seems to be a lost art today. We magnify our differences and ignore our sameness. We refuse to consider that we might have some common goals to unite over, instead of choosing to divide ourselves into parties or factions, or colors, or ideologies that have polar opposite goals. The only thing that could possibly bring us together in these days is a common experience of the gospel of Christ. Not a mere assent to the principles of the good news, but a firm embrace of the relationship that we all have to Christ. But even that common experience seems to be something that in our time is more divisive than uniting. Semantics seems to apply to the experience of Christ, putting words to that invitation in differing ways that appeal to different understandings. Some would ask us to embrace Christ as Savior and Lord, and others would say that you must be born again and illustrate that experience with a supernatural language. And some would say that if you don't speak in tongues, you must not have experienced God. Others say that tongues were a gift to a church in a certain age and not applicable to all ages. But if Christ is the same all the time. How could our experience of him be so different? 
And how could those different experiences of the person of Christ be a unifying presence? Our focus need not be on how each of us experienced Christ in different ways, but on the Christ who supplies the church with all it needs through each of us in our relationship to him. So let's take our eyes off ourselves and direct them to Christ. Only then can we stand firm in the one spirit, united in God's mission to the world to save all souls from hell and damnation. Salvation is the work of Christ, but it will not happen in the world around us if we don't stand with the Lord in unity and stand firm. Amen? Amen. 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 So let us continue as Jeff shares our hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. Oh, two or three. Much younger. I know that. That's why I what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leading on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread, what have I to fear, leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, same lands cleared from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. There's a picture of unity there, all of us leaning on those everlasting arms. Hallelujah. Let us continue with our congregational prayer for renewal as we say together, O oh God, perfect in your love for each of us, we come to you desiring to be perfect love to our neighbor. Where we have fallen short of that, give us strength to change it. Where we have opened our opportunities to serve our neighbors, forgive us. Give us strength to focus on you, Lord, and a desire to accept the things of the world around us love. In the, name In the name of, of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of love, the Savior who came and died for our forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit he sent to us to be with us when he returned to God, all be with you now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Now let us have, listen to Barbara as she leads us on. <clears throat> Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Jeff, for your music. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Nice see you, Jeff. <laughs> and uh, come next week to support Susan as she comes to preach. And uh, Master, who's send God bless out? her and her endeavors as well. Kathy, you going to send out an invitation? Is that, is that the way it's going to work? Um, I believe uh, you should have the same invitation next week. Okay. She's going to be using my um, program. So uh, it, unless she's not able to do that, 
uh, you can plan on getting in the same way next week as this week. All right. Okay. All right. So, okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a nice week, everyone. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you.